I enjoyed it. Like I keep saying, like I, I, I was give me numbers, numbers that have color. So that's why I always yeah. saw chemistry. Uh-huh. Chemistry is numbers with color. It, it explains yes. your world. Like why, why is water wet? Yes. Why do you see green? Why? <laughs> and it just gave you the language to answer the why. Yeah. And once understanding, you get to ask new questions and develop new things. Yes. Um, so the possibilities and just being able to take this knowledge and make something bigger than what I came with initially. Yeah. That was also the hype for me. It still is. I love I love exploring. I love the possibilities of doing new things. And I felt chemistry, still feel chemistry was a, a good way to give me that excitement about learning. Good day. Welcome to another episode of Discover Talent with Vico.net. Today I am with Hazel Bomba. Uh, welcome. Yay, thanks for having me, Mr. Krakis. How are you? I am amazing. I'm amazing. It's a good day today. It's a beautiful Saturday and I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Yeah. No, it's, good. it's good to have you. Uh, and thank you for giving us your uh, time as well. Cool. Uh, looking forward to our conversation. Definitely. One of the things as I was going through your background, uh, obviously you have a chemistry background uh, and an MBA. Um, I couldn't but notice that you have segued from a product role to a strategic communications role, right? And we'll come back to that (laughs) later. Um, But perhaps um, let's start with your product, you know, your technical role. What is that all about? I think that was a natural evolution just of my technical journey, as they call it that. So, yes, I am a chemist, loved it. Um, if I could do it again, I would still study chemistry. Yeah. And then I got my first job in the research and development department. So okay. we were making new stuff, taking stuff to the market. I got to travel across the continent with my organization, just mm. implementing products. Um, in the operations, going to the sites, love that. And then at the end, I was like, okay, it's enough now. Like, what's next? Yes. Um, So building on the understanding I had of the product, going to product management was a natural step. But the big gap between just being an R&D person and product management was the commercial aspect. Yeah. Had no clue how our product, how we actually made money. I knew yes. how the product moved within the organization, but how did we make money and how did we interact yeah. with the customers? And that's when the MBA became necessary uh-huh. um, to kind of fill that gap and to ask the correct questions. Yeah, um, yeah and that's how the product management aspect okay. happened as well. Yeah, that makes total sense to me. One thing I'm picking up there, you know, when I think of uh, somebody who studied chemistry and so forth, right? Mm-hmm. It comes across as something dry. Um, but in a way, you highlighted the fun part of it. You get to travel, you get to research, you get to develop stuff, you get to play with things, right? Is it like that? Take me back to why would it be dry? Like you threw me there. I'm like, <laughs> why would chemistry be Learning dry? all those formulas and so forth. You know, when from a studying perspective, okay. um, you know, so that's the dryness of okay. it. But in terms of the practical implementation and get involved in the field. Um, and I say this because most people's career choices are possibly informed by how the subject may come across. I enjoyed it. Like I keep saying, like I, I, I was, give me numbers, numbers that have color. So that's what I always yeah. saw chemistry. Uh-huh. Chemistry is numbers with color. It, it explains yes. your world. Like why, why is water wet? Yes. Why do you see green? Why? <laughs> and it just gave you the language to answer the why. Yeah. And once understanding, you get to ask new questions and develop new things. Yes. Um, so the possibilities and just being able to take this knowledge and make something bigger than what I came with initially. Yeah. That was also the hype for me. It still is. I love I love exploring. I love the possibilities of doing new things. And I felt chemistry, still feel chemistry was a, a good way to give me that excitement about learning. Yeah. The practicalities, are, I'll be honest, are a bit more harder than the theory because... Okay. It's so easy on paper. Oh, it's a cute little formula now to actually make yes, it happen. Yes. And it's like the real world has a whole bunch of other variables yeah. that you don't even know sometimes coming into the experiment. Yeah. That, oh, okay, didn't think about this. Oh, this didn't work. And now 
when you're working, it's a money, it's a time and money factor. You, yeah. It's been three months, it's still not working. Is it still with the money? Is it still with the efforts? Do you still want to fight for this? Do you have to go negotiate with your bosses to say, yeah. guys, give me the time, give me the resources mm -hmm. to make this happen. Um, and then it works in the lab, then it doesn't work operationally in the plant. You can't yeah. scale this. Why? Yeah. So it's a whole... I, I love that space of figuring out the why and making things work and seeing it yeah. come to life. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. where the MBA was helpful, right? In getting the commercial aspect Definitely. and acumen of how the two can complement each other. And being able to do the business cases and see the bigger picture of, okay, this is, real, this is how we'll get the money. So it is still worth the effort, continue doing the research or kill it. Yes. This is enough now the value that this is going to bring versus the cost is not going to work for us, end it now. So being able to see yeah. that big picture. Yeah. So it helps not to become too sentimental about certain... <sighs> I personally have never been that sentimental about things. You need to let things go. But being in product management, having stepped away from the research space, uh, it was tricky to have the conversations with my colleagues to be like, my guy, this is, I see your efforts and I've yeah. seen how hard you've worked. Yes. But this is not going to fly. We need to pivot. We need to um, change the script. That was tricky. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I guess with your line of work now, with communications, that could help land that message, right? In a softer way. But before we go there, what are some of the exciting products that you've worked on? So I, I am one of those people who, I don't know, are fortunate or unfortunate. I've yeah. only worked for one organization, essentially, since I left Varsity. Um, and my company specializes in mining explosives. So okay. we've been making explosives, well, still, for, the company's over 100 years old now. Yes. So we've been in the mining explosive industry. And I think um, it, it, it was, I came in. I thought I was going to be an environmentalist. I did chemistry because I was going okay. to make medicine and save the world or yes. be an environmentalist <laughs> and save the world. Now we're making explosives. <laughs> this felt like a crisis. Well, you can make environmentally friendly explosives, yes. right? And that's exactly what the pivot yeah. has been within the organization, within the greater world, really, just to make things more sustainable. Um, and how do you, beyond the chemistry, how do you take people on the journey. So what does what do our products mean for the communities yeah. in which we operate in? So we have to develop more greener chemistry, but even in how we apply our products and how we think through our business cases is, because we're not just based in South Africa and other spaces where we move is, how do we take the people along on this journey? How yeah. does the evolution of our company also mean the betterment of uh, the communities in which we operate? But initially, as a, as, a, as a young chemist coming into the space, yeah. I really felt like, what am I doing? Yes. But then just understanding that um, mining and the value that it brings to our economy and so much here is stuff that has been mined. Yes. <laughs> and that is necessary. It's not an evil thing that, that is done. Yeah. Um, but I had to overcome that for me personally. So that was interesting as sure, well. Sure, sure. And, and if you had to give advice to somebody coming in uh, or aspiring to be, you know, a product manager, let's say. Um, in a minute or two, if I said to you, a, you know, a day in the life of a product manager, how would you put that? What does that involve? I think firstly, I'd rather phrase the question to say, what problem are you solving? Because then however you approach your problem will determine what your day looks like. Yeah. You and me can be saving, solving the same problem, but your day looks different to mine. So I think with all careers, what are you trying to solve? The reason okay. we have jobs is because there's a problem um, and how you understand the problem determines mm. all of that. So with product management, I think the biggest problem that you're solving is how do you take the product to the people and take your product also within your organizational system. So how do you, this idea, how do you move it within your company and get it out towards the customers yeah. in a manner that is profitable for everybody. And you're yeah. the glue for everyone. You're the, you're the person who's calling R&D to say, hey, what are we doing? This is what the customers are saying. You're the person who's then going to the customers to say, hey, Mr. Customer, what's going on with you? Here's a potential solution. Can we even just trial on your site? You're the one who's speaking to the operational team to say, guys, here's something. Can we try to try it? Can we optimize it? What can we do? And you, it's your energy that drives the product from conception, conception all the way through to commercialization. Yeah. How yeah. you approach that, that is completely up to you and to your industry as well. Yeah. And, and what skill sets would you say you need to continuously develop in order to excel uh, in product? 
felt I did my best work when I took time to reflect and look at the numbers. Okay. So when I would just literally take the time for myself, download the data, see, because at the end of the day, we're here to work and make money. Yes. So look at the money, follow the money trail. So yeah. where are we selling? Who are we selling it to? Uh, what are the volumes? I understand what is happening to the money and that gives me space to think, okay, but if we optimize this operationally, we had a bad month because the plan broke down. What are we doing about that? Yeah. Being able to just sit and understand the data, look at the numbers, um, empowered me to make better decisions for myself and the team. Okay, understanding the numbers, uh, business analysis, uh, root cause analysis, you know, where did it go wrong? Yeah. Um, continuously. Or where can it even go right? Here's yeah. an opportunity. So what can we do better in the space to capitalize here yeah. as well? And then you segue into communications, mm. right? Um, take us into confidence. What was informing that? Yeah, that was a very interesting journey. And I think it wasn't a deliberate move. Uh, I, I got seconded last year into the organization, revamped our strategy. Um, and I'd spent about seven years in product management at that time. Yeah. And I said to my bosses, I'd had, had different portfolios in that time. I was like, guys, where's, where's my next? I need to grow. Yeah. Um, so they were like, cool, here's a strategy team. You guys can go, go have fun with those guys. And then this year, we, we consolidated that with the transformation office. And I was given the communications lead within the team to specifically communicate around the strategy. And I think how I see the problem is, how do you keep the whole organization on the journey with us? Okay. And that's a communication function. Yeah. So that's what that is. And that's how I ended up there. Yeah. 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 I mean, with your background of what you've been exposed to, I mean, a lot of it is around problem solving as well, right? Now, if you had to be president for a day and one said, what are the two, three things that Hazel will do that we need to solve as a country? You can even look at it from your perspective, from your field, right? What would that look like? What would that be? I'm even going to pivot away from my field. I think even before, it's not a field issue. I think, I look at us and I think, I feel like we have an identity crisis. Okay. Like there's no one saying, who are we as South Africans? Yeah. And what is it there for? So if you are this, you do things based on who you believe yourself to be. So who yeah. do we believe ourselves to be? And that yeah. determines what we think yeah. we can achieve. Yeah. Currently, I feel like... Just going back to the fact that we've got a 30% pass rate, is that the, that's underachieving. So okay. are we a bunch of underachievers? Okay. And if we are okay with that stats, what does that say about who we believe ourselves to be? Yeah. So I think fundamentally, I would start being delib deliberate about passing the message about who we are as South Africans. Okay. We are a bunch of winners, we're an amazing people, but we've forgotten that. And that is evidence in how we are not achieving to our potential. Yeah what I think. Okay, that's quite interesting. And I want to link it to your product uh, background. So essentially what I'm hearing as well is that what product are we building as South Africa, mm. right? Who are we, right? Mm. So, and also if I bury that with our pass rates, right? And basically you're saying, look, your, our benchmarks and standards are too low. So what will the end product look like? Yeah. It's not going to look good, no. right? We need to raise that. So in a funny way, you actually didn't deviate much, right? Oh. You're still <laughs> in your product space. Yeah. Um, and I think the power of what you said is how you marry communications to that, right? In bringing that across. Mm. So I can actually see, the link. you know, an unorthodox, you know, marriage um, between those two. Yeah, that's a good point. Looking back in terms of where you're at now, uh, what are some of your greatest achievements and what are you still looking to achieve moving forward? Jeez, I'm, I'm going to cluster them because I, I feel like for me, my greatest achievements have always been spaces where I feel I've been able to drive inclusivity. So I'm currently, I was chatting with my career counselor yesterday and we're looking at the things that make me tick. Yep. And the words that came up were adventure and care. Those are my two core values. I need okay. adventure, but I also care. And in this product role, simple thing. We, I walked in, I'm like, let me see the numbers here. You know, how many people are in our organization? Are we reaching everyone beyond the message? Is everybody even getting the communication? Mm. And then to realize there's people who don't even have email. I didn't know that. I thought everyone in this organization has got an email, yeah. a work email address. 
but we have people who don't. So I'm like, so how are they getting communicated to? So then we advocated to do WhatsApp. It's a simple thing. It's like, well, we already have their details. So why can't we just bring in this new technology mm. to be inclusive in our communication? So let's, let's, let's bring everyone together. And most times when I've been able to do things that make me feel that were great, it was when I was trying something new. I don't know whether it's going to work or fail, yeah. but we're going to try it. And yeah. it's been things that I felt have brought the care elements. Let's be more inclusive. Let's be empowering. So projects that have made me feel that way. Yeah. No, no, that is, that is fantastic. And, and, and you're quite right because everybody now has got information in their fingertips, isn't it? Mm. Uh, through our mobile phones. I mean, that has democratized yes. communications. Um, in, so let's tap in a into that a little way. bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And where to from here in terms of your career? Yeah. So I think the biggest learning as well, although my career started as a pure STEM role, yeah. is learning that a you as a person are not fixed. So it, it will evolve. You yes. will evolve. The career will evolve. But the lessons you learn don't just disappear. Yeah. Um, it's how do you build in all of that and as you understand yourself better or the journey of understanding yourself better to figure out what works for me and what doesn't. So as I'm saying to you now, I'm actively seeing a career coach. I'm having these conversations to say way to from here, what makes me sick? And the question I'm asking is, what is my specific value add? Not generically, you know, anyone can yeah. be a science person or a fine, but like what is Hazel's value add? And I want to capitalize more on that. And the question is, do I even know that? Have I taken the time to reflect on what it is that makes me um, beyond the functional things yeah. that I can get things done? Yeah. But what do you miss by not having me specifically yeah. in your organization? So busy unpacking that and just wanting to end up where I understand that and I'm capitalizing on that. Absolutely. If, 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 if you brought your team here that you work with every day mm -hmm. and we ask them in one word, describe is it what do you think they will say i don't know it depends who they are <laughs> but one of the points that someone did say is you always have a different view <laughs> you know like i'm i'm that person in the meeting be like yeah but what about this yeah <laughs> and it's like initially i used to think oh, i'm being problematic but then now my boss even gives me that time he's like okay hazel <laughs> what is your view <laughs> i don't want you to come <laughs> you need to speak it now and then you know i was just thankful that it lands, it lands and people actually hear my different view and things have happened and things have shifted as a result of me saying, I see that, but did you think about this as well? It's like, oh, okay, cool. Didn't think about that. So I tend to be that girl who asks the different, different questions, who's yeah. got the different opinion. Um, and I think that is what my team would say. And I'm a lot of fun. Ladies and gentlemen, Hazel Bomber, uh, if you're looking for adventure, uh, something different, somebody to problem solve, no, no further than Hazel. Uh, and please give a time. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming through. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you.